Hey, I just watched the video that you're about to watch, and I felt the need to add this preamble. If you're a Bitcoin expert or a blockchain developer or someone who knows like the, the ins and outs of how a blockchain works, I'm about to say some really ignorant and stupid shit. I just want you to bear with me because I will get my comeuppance later on, and my reaction to to realizing what I've done uh, was entertaining enough that I felt this was... Um, worth uploading anyway. Uh, and it's in the VOD, so I, I said it, it's on the record. So yeah, uh, please bear with me and uh, stick around. So I'm in front of my computer on Friday, uh, vibing, uh, checking the uh, crypto stocks or uh, the, the crypto ticker. Uh, spoiler alert. Actually, no, this is not a spoiler alert. This is a public... Um, this is a public service announcement. Checking the price of cryptocurrency multiple times a day is bad for your mental health. Uh, don't do it. I, I don't follow my own advice, but you should. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, um, I was vibing, and I noticed uh, this, this big dip here. You know, I've, I've mentioned this on the stream before. I don't trade crypto. Uh, I have no intentions of... Uh, I'm a I'm a buy and hold guy. I uh, the the my main motivation for uh, um, to learn the skills of technical analysis is to detect a good deal uh, when I buy and hold uh, my my uh, my crypto my Bitcoin. And when I saw this, let me just get rid of this. When I saw this, I was like, mm, 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 mm. we we got a deal coming. Uh, unfortunately, the market has traded sideways since, but uh, I really like this. And when I shared my excitement with a friend, he um, he mentioned that uh, there had been a rumor that uh, that was behind this, that was behind this big red candlestick on the twenty first, which is this right here. There was a Bitcoin stale. Uh, there was a stale Bitcoin block today. Honestly, just um, a, as a preamble to this, I uh, I'm not an expert in in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. I know enough about the basics uh, to to be comfortable enough. But I know that there are there are a bunch of people who are way more knowledgeable about this shit than I am. Uh, but that being said, we'll come back to that. So yeah, there was a stale block today. I don't even know what a stale Bitcoin block is. But anyway, at the height, uh, slush pool has been beaten like Jesus Christ. This has been on screen long enough. You can read this. It appears as if a small double spend of around $21 worth of Bitcoin was detected. Um, and looking at this screenshot here, is this viewable on screen? That's good enough. Um, yeah, I... I um, I checked this out before the stream because I didn't want to be in full discovery mode in front of y'all tonight. And uh, when I read, uh, where is it? When I when I read this, one transaction involving Bitcoin has been double spent on the longest chain. I said, "What the fuck?" Out loud. Um, the notion that Bitcoin can be double spent at all is uh, ludicrous. I will come back to that uh, shortly. Um, but let me continue this thread here. Uh, a transaction in the losing chain sent this much Bitcoin to this address, and a transaction on the winning chain spent the same inputs only sent to... Man, I'm reading this right now. This appears that... Um, this looks like the person who wrote this doesn't understand how blockchain works. Uh, like... The whole point of a losing chain is that when the chain loses, it never happened. This, this is ridiculous. And you know what? I'm going to skip to the end of this uh, because as I uh, explained a couple seconds ago, I'm not an expert in, in Bitcoin by any means or in cryptocurrency. However, uh, do you think... Let's see here. I think that uh, the... the um, the real story in this is that this, this rumor exposed how many people are in Bitcoin who have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. 
Now, I have the advantage that I, I have a technical background. So when I'm reading white papers, um, even though what's covered in the white paper, even the parts that fly over my head, they, I can still understand them enough uh, um, to, to, to get a grasp of this. Do you think in the Bitcoin white paper here, a purely do you think that a paper that has this these opening lines in their abstract would so easily permit a double transaction a purely peer to peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution digital signatures provide part of the solution but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is still required to prevent double spending um uh i i i the prevention of double spending is is brought up in line four of the fucking abstract for Bitcoin. So the notion that uh, uh, the notion that I've been aware of Bitcoin back when it was only worth a couple dollars. Whoops. Oh, wrong. There we go. I was aware of Bitcoin back when it was only worth a couple hundred dollars. Uh, back when it was only worth a couple dollars. And when Bitcoin like broke uh, like uh, 300 or whatever, that was a huge deal. If, and this is just me being a layman really, uh, if it was possible to cheat blockchain to the point where you can double spend Bitcoin, uh, when it hit like three or $400, um, there was enough excitement where someone would have found out how to do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of ludicrous, but, um, that being said, uh, the, the real story is that the mere rumor of, uh, of double spending Bitcoin was enough for uh, a bunch of people who have no idea what the fuck they're investing in to, uh, to freak out. And, uh, it got me a decent deal on Bitcoin. I'll say you that. Uh, but yeah, to the... I was so over, I was so shook that uh, I went on image flip and, uh, and made this little pithy. Uh, people who believe you can double spend Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, guy. Uh, like, you, you, <laughs> to, to fuck with the blockchain, you would need a computer or a system of computers powerful enough to overpower the rest of the network. Uh, and, and to just know that in, uh, in, in, in the broad sense, it, it kind of makes the notion of a double spend, uh, absolutely ridiculous. Um, so in the spirit of education, I, uh, I looked at this earlier and I don't, uh, I'd like to read it with y'all, uh, to educate myself a little and, uh, hopefully educate you. Uh, Lucas Nuzzi, who, am I following him? Uh, I'll, I'll add him to a list later. Um, I was reading a, an article about this, uh, this double spend rumor, and uh, he published a, uh, a, a Twitter thread that we will read together. Oh, actually, let me just vet something, because, uh, uh, you know, scrolling on Twitter is, uh, is not without its risks. Okay, cool. So the thread is uninterrupted. So, Let's read this together, and uh, we'll see what we can learn. There is an alarming amount of misinformation fueled by the media on what exactly happened to Bitcoin yesterday and whether funds were double spent. Here's everything you need to know. On the 18th, a user broadcasts a transaction with very low fees. When users underpay fees, their transactions get stuck because the miners have more profitable op opportunities. Uh, the users are left with two options. A, wait till the fee level drops. B, tell miners that they will increase fees. You see, I'm, um, in my understanding of blockchain, like I've been in a similar situation uh, where I wanted to send Bitcoin to myself and I was trying to be a cheapskate on the fees. And um, like, I didn't even know that you could tell people that you wanted to pay more. Um, I'll, I'll learn more. This is where I decided that I wanted to, to read this on stream. Uh, the, what happened to me 
was um, after after I sent myself the Bitcoin and it disappeared from the wallet that I was sending my Bitcoin from, I spent a very scary couple of days wondering where the fuck my Bitcoin was. Um, and then um, later in the... Uh, a, a couple of days later, basically, the... Um, the the Bitcoin was magically back in my original wallet because uh, the idea is if if a block is added to the blockchain without a transaction in it, that transaction never happened. And I guess at some point it timed out and my Bitcoin just reappeared in my wallet. So I sent it back to myself for a higher fee and uh, bingo, bongo, everything's cool. Let's continue. Mm -mm. So, the most popular way is to be increased fees on an already broadcast transaction. Wait, sorry, let me rephrase that. Let me reread that. Oop, no, I don't want any... Uh... The most popular way to be increased fees of an already broadcast transaction is through a replace by fee transaction. I have no idea what this is. Put simply, RBF is a copy-paste of the original transaction with higher fees and an explicit instruction to favor the new transaction instead. Okay, this is probably hard-coded. I doubt, because uh, I know you can you can add comments to a Bitcoin transaction, uh, but I doubt like just saying, hey, please uh, ignore the first one, because you're, you're speaking to computers. When we're talking about um, tipping the miners, you're... you're we're talking about speaking to the computer that they're using to mine, so it's 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 code. Uh, where was I? Yeah. Nearly a day passed after our infamous user broadcast the original transaction and miners did not include it. So the user decided to use the RBF on the 19th with higher fees, but not high enough. And the transaction was again stuck. Oh, you cheapskate. You get what you pay for, biatch. Uh, a couple hours later, the user decided to bump fees up again via a second RBF. This time around, the user paid enough fees. So to recap, the user broadcast a total of three transactions. One here, uh, so on the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th. Uh, I don't know what a sat B is. Oh, a Satoshi, okay. Uh, a Satoshi, I think, is one billionth of a Bitcoin. Let's... Uh, uh, One hundred, so it's a one hundred millionth of a bitcoin. How many zeros is that? So that's zero point zero 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 one bitcoin. Roughly, <laughs> don't quote me. Said he live on stream. Okay, so uh, here's where things get more complex. At around 1.18 a.m., the blockchain split into two versions, which is an entirely normal occurrence, a fundamental part of how Bitcoin works. Yeah, the, the fundamental thing of blockchain is the, the, the longest chain is the correct one, and, and that's it. And that's why to fuck around with it, you'd need to overpower the entire processing power of the Bitcoin network, which is what makes the very notion of a double spend so ludicrous to people who know this very basic fact. Um, shit, I sidetracked myself. Um, yeah, when this happens, one plus times per month, miners need to converge on a single version of events, which often takes around one block or 10 minutes. However, by the time the user broadcasts a third transaction, fee levels had quieted down and the chain was split. One miner picked the first low level, um, wait, one miner picked the first transaction with a low fee for their version of the chain. The other miner picked up the third, the highest fee, RBF transaction. The thing about RBFs, and I'm, I, I learned that RBFs were a thing a couple minutes ago. So the thing about RBFs is that they're entirely optional. Miners decide which transaction to pick. In this occasion, it might have looked like a malicious double spend, but is completely, it, it's a completely normal event. The chain was split for one block, again, normal, but ultimately the miner on the branch with the low fee transaction ended up winning. The important thing to know is that yes, there might be different versions of the same transaction, but only one will ultimately be accepted. The longest block wins. Um, 
follow this man. Oh, oh wait. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll check him out later. Here, let me give you a little shout out. This Bitcoin engineer and researcher made a helpful timeline of events using CoinMetrics data. We'll, we'll circle back to this because there, there isn't much more left to this thread. Again, you know, let's do it now. Oh, this isn't as intuitive as I thought. So these, oh shit. Again, this, this is um, when I say that uh, my computer science background is, is rusty. I, I kind of get it, uh, but not enough. Like, yeah, it was a mistake to open this. I shouldn't have come here. This stream is over. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, uh, again, RBFs in a stale Wait, RBF's in stale blocks is business as usual. No reason to freak out. No inflation. No double spend was actually confirmed. Just a ton of loud ignorance and misinformation. Hell yeah. This, w this is a wake-up call for crypto media. Looking at you, crypto and Cointelegraph. Oh, one thing that I'll say, um, when, I, when I saw this, like whoever, whoever works on Fork Monitor, you need... Whoever works on Fork Monitor, you need to take a serious look in the mirror. <laughs> like, I, I, um, wow. All right. So coming back. Whoops, that's my meme. Here. So um, this is a wake-up call to crypto media. You benefit by serving crypto ads. Wait, you benefit by serving crypto ads. I urge you to... At the very least, understand your responsibility and step up your technical game. How about sponsoring a Bitcoin developer? Another clarifying point, BitMEX Research is doing an amazing job for the community with Fork Monitor. Oh, I just got pwned, like right now in real time. I just fucking went full screen telling whoever works on Fork Monitor that you need to take a look in the mirror. And this person, who's highly more knowledgeable than I am, just fucking bitch slapped me right back down into my seat. So, uh, hey, he wins. I'm sorry, Fork Monitor, for what I just said a couple minutes ago. This guy, I'm just going to bow to his knowledge. So anyway, their, their depiction of what happened was accurate. Unfortunately, their post was grossly misrepresented and misrepresented for clickbait. This, this kind of um, circles back to what I was talking about last week. I was the dog right there. When I saw this and I just went on this rant about how uh, basically they, they should essentially be uh, ashamed of themselves, I'm the dog. Uh, I am Snickers wondering why Scott Adams won't take me outside to play with me. Uh, I just, this was just so far beyond my comprehension. So, uh, apologies again. <laughs> this video is probably going to get like 100 views at most. We'll see. Um, I don't know how I missed this, but make sure to check out... Has okay, this is another uh, uh, shout-out. So this goes into much richer detail, but uh, I will link this thread in the show notes, actually. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen Lucas Nuzzi's face and profile here on screen long enough to uh, already follow him at your leisure. I will still link to that in the show notes. So uh, uh, listen, that was very interesting. I, um, <laughs> I, again, I didn't know that you could just manually tell people, hey, I'm willing to pay more for this transaction. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was entertaining for you. I, I fucking love crypto uh, to the point where I would say if... Um, if people, if you're trading crypto as a means to make more dollars, as far as I'm concerned, you don't really get it. Um, uh, but on the other hand, it's totally not a currency. Holy shit. Uh, like, it's a currency in the abstract, but as far as the, the, the fluctuations, it is, n it's nuts. If someone I, uh, I, I loved uh, came up to me and said, hey, Sid, uh, you think I should get some Bitcoin? Uh, I would say no. Uh, if you, 
if you're responsible enough to, to know what Bitcoin is and what you're getting into, you already have some at this point. Uh, so if you're, if you're seeing the headlines of $40,000 US and that's when you're getting interested and you didn't learn from the 20,000 bubble a couple years ago, like uh, go forth in peace. Ah, oh, man. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, this was quite the roller coaster ride. I've never been so opinionated and smacked down by an expert in such a short amount of time. My head is still spinning. Uh, hopefully that was uh, entertaining for you. Um, if you like this, I do these streams every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. You can subscribe and ring the bell to know when I go live. Um, if you don't, I would really love a thumbs up. That helps these videos a lot. And uh, leave a comment. I'm curious to know what you think. On that note, thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you soon. Ooh.